Rejoice! Cheap electric cars, we've been crying out for them endlessly. And now, at long last, it's starting to feel like we've got a really decent selection of reasonably priced ones. You know, electric SUVs are all the rage these days, and it's no surprise. It is a lovely way to get around. The raised driving position, the silent, punchy electric power, the general sense that you are just a little bit better than everyone else in their non-electric, non-SUV peasant wagons. The thing is, it's quite an expensive club to get into. The BMW iX3 costs £60,000. The Tesla Model X is hundred grand. Even Skoda's big electric bus is the better part of 40k by the time you've put some bits on it. And that is where this comes in. Because this is the MG ZS EV, and it is, quite simply, the cheapest electric SUV. So it's no wonder it's been such a hit for the MG brand. Owners praise it for its generous helping of standard equipment, its ease of use, but above all else, they love that price. So what MG has very bravely decided to do with this, the updated ZS, is make it more expensive. So this is the MG ZS EV and, wait, what? Fully Charged Live is back and bigger than ever. Get your tickets now to the world's number one electric vehicle and clean energy live show, featuring all manner of electric vehicles, tons of test drives, live theatre sessions, interactive home energy experiences, and so much more. See you there. Now, before we get into the specifics of this car, it's worth me giving you a very quick backstory to the MG brand, because it's been a fairly remarkable few decades filled with highs, lows, and quite a lot of bankruptcy, actually. We can skip most of it, but the thing you really need to know is that MG is no longer a boutique British sports car brand, hand building cars out of a shed in Oxfordshire. It is in fact, essentially, the British sub-brand of a Chinese automotive behemoth by the name of SAIC. And when I say that this is a big company, I'm talking big company. Let me hit you with a couple of facts just to give you some idea of how big I'm talking. Fact number one, last year, SAIC built four million cars. Four million, not all for themselves. Some of them they built for VW and GM for whom they manufacture in China. Fact number two, and this is my favorite one, back in 2005 when SAIC first tried to buy MG, it lost out in the bidding war to another gigantic Chinese car brand called Nanjing. So SAIC just bought Nanjing. Imagine if the man in front of you in the queue in Tesco's bought the last Twix and you just went, right, I'm buying you. It's not a perfect comparison, but you get the idea. And under the watchful eye of its new Chinese backers, the MG brand has been quietly flourishing for the last few years. Last year, MG sold 25,000 cars, which may not sound hugely impressive, but it represents a 52% increase on the year before, which makes MG Europe's fastest growing car brand. Now I should quickly fess up to something at this stage, because in a recent video on the new Aura Cat, I described it as being the first Chinese electric car that you could buy in the UK. Welcome everyone to the first Chinese EV that you can buy here in the UK. And many of you quite rightly pointed out in the comments that no, this, this was the first Chinese electric car that you could buy in the UK. It's true. I didn't count it because, well, it's badged as a British brand. It's badged as a British car. But the truth is, MG is about as British as Kung Pao chicken these days. But I'm perfectly fine with that. Right, let's have a little nose around the outside of the facelifted ZS EV. And the main story is, well, 
it's got a new face. Look at that. Do you remember the old one was pretty much identical to the petrol powered ZS, so it had a grill which it didn't need and now it's all smoothed over. I think it looks a bit cleaner and I tell you what, I think this is a bit of a trend in electric car design. I think brands are realizing that people want to proudly display their electricness and this car is certainly more unapologetically electric than its predecessor. New LED headlights are a bit sharper, a bit pointier, quite like those. Coming around the side, there's not a huge amount to talk about. Truth be told, the side profile is pretty much identical to the pre-facelift ZS, but worth noting, new wheel design, quite like those, and this blue is new, and I really quite like it. But that's about it in terms of design walk around, and that's perfectly okay with me because the really key changes that MG have made are underneath the skin. So then, the inside of the ZS EV. Well, you wouldn't sit in here and think, well, that's decisively the cheapest electric SUV on the market. It's quite nice. They've had a little fiddle around with some of the materials in here. I quite like this fabric-y stuff across the dash, which sort of faux carbon fiber, maybe. We've got kind of faux leather on the seats. It all looks quite nice. New 10-inch touchscreen serving the new infotainment system. That comes as standard. It is really not a bad looking cabin. I will say this. When you begin to touch things, it does slightly begin to fall apart and you do slightly become aware of the fact that it's a bit cheaper than some of the other electric SUVs on the market. For example, these switches, they look nice, but they're just a bit kind of mushy and yucky to press. Likewise, these handles, they look lovely, but actually, if you touch it, you realise quite quickly it's just a slightly nasty, very hard-edged plastic wrapped in some sort of faux leather, Don't, not a big fan of that. Also, this infotainment system, which again is new and which MG were quite proud of at the press launch, is um, it's rubbish. It's, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Watch the lag time on this. That's my temperature. I'm gonna increase it now using this switch. Oh, come on, that is, <laughs> that's an age between me pressing the button and things actually happening. The good news is this system does benefit from over the air updates, so it will get better over time and the even better news is you get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as standard so it barely even matters. And just while we're on the subject of standard equipment a few other bits and bobs that come as standard on the base car include those LED headlights, 360 degree parking camera, keyless entry and get this vehicle to load functionality like you get on the Ionic and the Kia EV6 that is properly impressive stuff. However if you want to shell out another 1500 quid for the trophy edition which I have here you get some really fancy stuff for example wireless charging mats just here big glass panoramic roof which does open and close and adjustable electric heated front seats Ooh. and i think that pack is worth it if you can afford the extra because it really does things like the roof and the charge mat they do elevate it into a really properly premium cabin nice Oh, before we set off, one thing I need to mention. Look at this, look at this. Look at this conventional charge flap. Now that's not that exciting. Wrong, because in the old ZS, it was wildly over-designed. It was behind the badge and the whole piece like came up and then you had to get underneath it like this and owners hated it. In the comments of our ZS review, countless comments from ZS owners going, the charge port's annoying. Well, look, they've listened. They fixed it. You love to see it, shall we? So then, out on the road in the MG ZS EV, what do we reckon about the way it drives? Well, usually, often, in cheaper cars, suspension is one area where their cheapness is revealed, because good suspension components, quite expensive. And yet, here I am on an especially bumpy British B road, and the car's doing really, really well. It's thanks to fairly small wheels, big squashy tyres, high ride height, nice soft suspension. It just absorbs the bumps and camber of this road really nicely. I do bounce around a little bit, it's quite squashy, but I don't mind that at all. It really is quite pleasant to sit in. I think the biggest surprise about the way this car drives is just how punchy the motor is. I'll show you what I mean. If I knock it into sport mode here, ooh, it's only front motor, single motor, but it's the equivalent of about 156 brake horsepower. It's much more than this car needs, frankly. Properly zippy, 0 to 60, eight and a half seconds. It feels quicker than that. And I've got to be honest with you, I've 
I've spent some time in this car in the last week kind of herring around British B roads a bit too quickly. And it does get a bit nerve wracking because the car, again, quite punchy, quite quick, but the suspension is so set up for softness and squashiness. And the combination of those two things means that when you hurry it along, it starts to get a bit unsettled. It rolls around a lot. It doesn't feel especially planted. It's a bit scary. Actually, that's enough of that. Let's now knock the car back into normal. In fact, eco, the mode that suits it best and calm things down a bit. This is how you're supposed to drive the ZS. Now I mentioned earlier in the beginning of this video that MG have increased the price for the ZS with this facelift. That's largely due to the increased battery size. And when I say increased, I mean a lot bigger. The old car, 44 kilowatt hours. This new one, 72 kilowatt hours, which takes range from around 160 miles to more like 260. That is proper all the car you need range. And I think it suits this car well. Sub 200 mile range, it's okay on a little city car that you just zip around town in. But in an SUV like this, you wanna be able to go mountain biking in the woods on the weekend or visit your grandparents out of town or take your grandparents mountain biking. And you can do that now with this car. And here's the kicker. Despite that hugely increased battery size, this car still starts at 28 and a half thousand pounds after the government EV grant. I'm going to say that again. A 28 and a half thousand pound electric SUV with 260 miles of range. They're giving them away. Allow me to just check some notes on my phone and tell you for context what that money buys you elsewhere, okay? Hyundai Kona Electric. We love the Kona on this channel. We hail it as one of the great bargain electric cars. And yes, you can have one for 500 quid cheaper than this car, but only the small battery one, which means 100 miles less range and much less cabin space inside. The Kia e Nero, a range monster, fantastic electric car, slightly rangier even than this. £4,000 more with the big battery than this ZS. A Vauxhall Mocha E is four grand more than this car. It's just it's a bargain. Actually, one final word on the price, because it's worth noting, there's a cheaper version of this coming. This is actually the long range ZS EV with the 72 kilowatt hour battery. But early next year, we get a shorter range version, 51 kilowatt hours, still substantially bigger than the outgoing ZS, still good for some 200 miles of range. We don't have prices yet, but I would expect that to cost comfortably a couple of grand less than this one. In other words, 26 and a half thousand pounds after the government grant for an electric SUV. It's mighty impressive. Back seats, jack test. Seats in my tall person driving position. Let's see what we're working with. Oh, that's not bad, that's not bad. Legroom, not ample, but I've got a pretty flat floor back here and I've got a good amount of headroom. It's worth keeping in mind this car is not built on bespoke EV architecture. It uses the same platform as the petrol ZS, but considering that, cabin space really quite decent. If you do want bespoke EV architecture in your SUV, by the way, the cheapest way of getting it is an entry level ID4. Incredibly roomy inside, but starts at about 35 grand and that's for the small battery version with some 100 miles less range than this because again bargain and finally because i know how much you guys love a boot shot shall we treat ourselves oh there it is 448 liters pretty decent size worth noting that is one of the more substantial lips i've seen on a boot so if you're dragging stuff out you're gonna have to heave it over that but not the end of the world and it really is quite big nice little under boot boot there for your cables and whatnot and if you flatten the seats down we're talking something like 1150 liters proper proper hauler now i do have a couple of complaints with this car that i want to share with you yes it's a budget car so i'm not going to whinge about material quality or not having a harman kardon sound system but there are a couple of things that i think they've slightly missed the mark on Number one, the brake pedal is just so yucky. It's so mushy and horrible to press. I wish I never had to press it, but unfortunately I do because of complaint number two, the regen isn't quite strong enough. I've got three settings for my regen braking, but the highest setting isn't quite powerful enough to bring the car to a complete stop, meaning I can't do one pedal driving, meaning I have to use that yucky brake pedal. Annoying. I think all electric cars should have proper one pedal driving. It should just be a given in this day and age. What else bothers me? Ooh, 
the seat is too high in the cabin. Stay with me on this, because I know the whole point of SUVs is that you sit high up, but the whole car is supposed to be high up. You're not supposed to be sat high in the cabin. And look, I am, my knee is practically scraping the cruise control stalk. And I, I know I'm freakishly tall, but it's just weird. I feel like I'm sitting on the car instead of in it, and there's not a huge amount of adjustability in that regard, a bit annoying. What's really annoying is the hypersensitive forward collision assist. You can turn it off. Unfortunately, you have to turn it off every time you get into the car. But just regular city driving, you slow down because there's a car in front and there's a set of traffic lights and the car goes beep, 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 beep. danger. No danger. I see the car. I'm slowing down. Relax. It's also very paranoid about range, actually, come to think of it. As soon as you drop below 10%, every couple of minutes it goes, warning. Low battery. I know. And also, I've still got like 50 miles left. Concluding thoughts on the new ZS EV. I think MG have taken a very, very good product and made it a lot better. And what I really like about what they've done here is they've been very careful, very tactical with how they've upgraded this car. They've not overdone it and spent too much money on it and made it too expensive, thus throwing it in line with things like the ID4 and the Skoda Enyaq. They've been very careful and upgraded a couple of key areas where it really needed upgrading while still retaining that really, really competitive price. It's so much cheaper than everything else that you forgive it for having a couple of mushy buttons and an infotainment system from the 1500s. It's a bargain. You'll get over it. At the end of the day, it's comfortable, it's easy to use, it's spacious, it's got huge range, and it's an absolute bargain. I think the biggest thorn in this car's side is actually the MG5, the estate car, because that is also due a facelift. In fact, I think it's getting one quite soon. And when it gets it, it may well offer as much range as this car for around the same price, and it might drive better, and it might have even more storage. It's a lovely problem to have if you're the MG brand. That being said, if you are someone who's committed to that SUV high riding experience, no problem. This is a solid option. And actually, there are a few cars that cost a fair bit more that this makes look a bit silly. We have been crying out for more affordable electric cars on this channel since the beginning of time. Bobby's been flying that flag for 10 years. And it really feels like we're starting to get a few different solid options now at the bottom end of the price range. We've got so many posh, expensive, ostentatious EVs to choose from, north of 50 grand. But actually, that sub 30,000 pound space is starting to get a bit interesting. ID3, ZS, MG5, or a cat. They're coming. Cheap electric cars, they're coming, my friends. Well, final thoughts on the MG ZS. Isn't it amazing how fast things can change? As recently as five years ago, MG were nowhere. They were no one. They were yet another British automotive sob story, just like Austin, Jensen, Bristol, TVR. Yeah, I said it. And look at them now, making some of the best value electric cars that money can buy. It's amazing what you can do with a can-do attitude and billions of pounds from a Chinese investor. And make no mistake, electrification is at the heart of MG's resurgence. One third of new MGs sold are electric. That's a higher percentage than any other car brand other than the Teslas and the Polestars who only sell electric stuff. And this is just further proof of that thing I keep banging on about, about how this transition from ICE to EV, it levels the playing field and it creates this opportunity for brands to completely reinvent themselves and leapfrog the competition in one big jump. I seriously hope that the Toyotas and the Hondas and the Fords of this world, the brands that we traditionally buy our cheap cars from, are looking at this and crapping themselves, because they should be. So there we go, the MG ZS EV, a fantastic value for money electric car, now even better. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and if you have been, thank you for watching. Really hope you enjoyed that. We're so lucky to have Jack on board. I mean, okay, he's very tall, much taller than me, but he's an amazing guy, really knows his stuff, just knows a lot about cars, which is I really, really appreciate. Here's another episode that Jack did, an absolute classic. Do have a look at that. That's our latest episode that's just come out. 
up there you can subscribe to Fully Charged Show and up there you can support us on Patreon. Thank you.